Hi guys, welcome back. Now, a bit of news on Anthem. If you took part in the demo, you may have taken part in the storm. A lot of people thought it was a little lacklustered, a bit less of an end game. However, Anthem have now released a trailer of part two of their Anthem series showing exactly what to expect. After end game, now when you get to level 30, you can still go on. So this will break it down into a bit more detail. I'll let the trailer play fully in its full entirety, then at the end I'll do a quick roundup on what I feel about Anthem because it's a game that I will actually be playing and try to do a lot of update news on it as well. Welcome to part two of the Anthem gameplay series. In this episode, we are going to look at the expanding world of Anthem and its end game content. We're a long way from the Cenotaph and the storm is worse than we thought. This is it, close as we get with the Striders. Agreed. Looks like we fly from here. When you start Anthem, you are a freshly recruited freelancer that joins a failed mission to shut down a cataclysm called the Heart of Rage. It beat us, Halleck. We need to regroup. It is up to you to redeem the freelancers and ultimately find a way to succeed in silencing it. This story is your introduction into the world, but the game doesn't end with its conclusion. The most dedicated freelancers will push themselves against tougher and tougher challenges, taking on more daring and deadly quests. In order to do this, you will have to improve not only yourself, but your arsenal of javelins. This is where your path to glory begins. As you continue to level up and become a more powerful pilot, new content and challenges will become available to you. With six modes of difficulty, including three which are unlocked in Endgame, Anthem will have a challenge for all levels of players, from Easy to Grandmaster 3. The higher the difficulty, the better the chances you will have in finding the rarest gear and personalization items in the game. When you want to make a statement, maybe polish that javelin up with a nice coat of pain and thunder. What's the use of being the best pilot in Bastion if your style doesn't match your power? From greeting friends in our social hub, the launch bay, to how you arrive on missions or celebrate your victories, we give you lots of opportunity to show off your javelin style. Each suit has many ways to get it looking just the way you want, from unique armor pieces, customizing color and textures, to collecting vinyls and emotes. Your suit will soon become a reflection of yourself, making your wins all the more glorious. Once you reach the pilot level of 30, you will continue to improve your javelins by finding or crafting the rarest gear. That's where our end game content really begins for you. At this point, you have likely finished the core story mission and your focus will begin to shift to new objectives. These are challenges, contracts, free play, and strongholds. Matthias Sumner was investigating some relics at a ruin near the fort. I need you to find him and bring him back home safe. People you meet in Fort Tarsus will sometimes need your help and offer you contracts. These are unpredictable missions in which you deal with various problems in the world. By increasing your reputation with different groups, you'll gain access to crafting blueprints. Doing daily, weekly, and monthly challenges will provide you crafting material and coin. This is a great way to make not only new gear, but further personalize your javelins. On occasion, people will offer you legendary contracts. Hello, hello, hello. These missions have multiple parts to them and are far more difficult to complete. In this case, Matthias Sumner, an arcanist, hires you to not only provide valuable field research, but also stop a Dominion plot to wake a Titan. Strongholds represent some of the highest level challenges in the game and will require a team to take them on. These typically are longer challenges that will test all that you have learned as a freelancer. Whether or not your javelins can withstand the deadliest enemies in the world. Plan well, communicate with your team, and you will benefit from some of the most rewarding loot Anthem has to offer. Anthem is a living, changing world with threats arising from mysterious and dangerous places all the time. New missions, 
characters and stories will be introduced in the weeks and months to come. This could either be a single scout or the beginning of something much, much bigger. Some of these changes will be small. Others will enrich the social experience with guilds and social hubs, while others will be massive and world-changing events. Everything you will have done in the game is preparing you for what is about to come. Our most ambitious and challenging content will come to Anthem in the form of cataclysms. Time-limited world events that cause physical manifestations to occur. Extreme weather, incursions of dangerous hostile enemies, and new mysteries to solve. The story of Anthem has just begun. What might have seemed impossible when you were a fresh recruit will challenge you to new heights as you build your arsenal of javelins and unleash your power. Strong alone, stronger together, right? Ah, who told you that? Now, as I said at the start of the video, a lot of people who actually took part in the storm, which was given to us in the demo, enjoyed it, but didn't think it lived up to the hype that Anthem had given it. Anthem did come back and say, look, this was just basically a storm that we created for the demo itself. Now, we do know that the demo was a version of the game which is months old. They have already said that some patches will come out after release as well. Now, it's good in a way that they're already looking forward, but again, it is a bit annoying that these things can't be ironed out. Now, that's no sort of hate. It's just if there is issues, then they can maybe try and get them all done instead of giving us predicted patches instead. That being said, there's a lot of hate came Anthem's way. I played about 10 hours of Anthem and honestly really enjoyed the game. Now, I found it a lot better with a controller playing on PC than I did with keyboard and mouse. That's just personal preference. I wasn't bored at all because I could switch between the strongholds and the free play. I found that it did feel a bit like Destiny 2, but the big problem for me in Destiny 2 was in between missions, etc. Having to go in between places, it just took too long. There wasn't enough stuff in between. And I think Anthem actually doesn't have that or as much. Now... A good thing about Anthem, which they're saying now, is you can still level up. You could do it again in Destiny 2, but they're going to bring in new missions all the time, apparently. Now, if they live up to that and they do it, then great, because I personally felt that Destiny, the missions didn't come quick enough, and when they did come, they were quite boring, to be honest. It was just mirror image of previous missions, in some cases. Some were new, yes, but some were just weren't that great, if I'm being perfectly honest. In my opinion, that is, you may feel differently. However, I actually do have high hopes for Anthem. I know a lot of people are very sceptical because it's EA. However, the studio behind it seem very dedicated to actually getting it to where it is. Now, considering it's AAA, it is very pricey. The demo was good. Some people had issues. There was loading screen issues as well. I didn't have that in the second demo. The VIP demo was very clunky. That's why I didn't stream it because... The loading screens were very annoying, but that was fixed, so they are progressively working on fixing these things. Now, the only concerns I've got for Anthem is it doesn't go down the loot box way, which they said they haven't. I know someone posted a picture of a skin at $20, and the internet practically broke over Anthem and a bloody skin. Now, I play a lot of games, and they all have skins. League of Legends has skins you can buy, but with... Anthem, you can completely customise your javelin without having to buy any skins. I changed mine about four or five times in, in the duration of the time I played in 10 hours, and I was happy with what I got. So I think it's really, if you want to invest the money or you've got a very certain critique of how you want your javelin to look, then yeah, fair enough, spend the money. But a lot of channels who do reviews and news made a very big thing about this. And to be honest, it really isn't that big a deal. If you want to buy a skin, buy it. It doesn't change the game. You just look a different color. That is it. Nothing else. Gameplay wise, I honestly thought it was quite solid. Mechanics were really good. Again, I was using a controller. I don't know what it was like on a keyboard and mouse because I just didn't want to go down that avenue. I was console before PC. So for games like this, controller is normal for me the jury will be out i think really it comes down to on launch how it performs 
is there going to be enough content within it as well and I, I genuinely do hope there is because I, I think Anthem could be a good game now one thing it could kill Anthem is the fact they could take too long to get new content into the game Destiny 2 for me after four weeks I just didn't really go back to it or the raids because I just got bored so I just hope Anthem doesn't do the same so guys let me know what you think below the trailer was quite indicative of what's coming hopefully they stick to it and I'll catch you in the next one